Even though it's been in Hypixel Skyblock for over a year now, nether fishing is still one of the most underrated money-making methods in the entire game. Most people think that nether fishing is good but not great for money, so that's why I'm here to explain to you how you can make upwards of 60 million coins an hour nether fishing. In this video, I'll be going over the gear you need, the strategies to use, and all the tips and tricks for nether fishing in Hypixel Skyblock. And so, let's get right into the video. Because this video will be long, I'll be breaking it down into sections where I'll be talking about the basics of nether fishing, gear you should be using, techniques, and the profit breakdown. If you want to skip ahead to any of these sections, you can go to the timestamps that are on screen now. You may find it hard to believe, but with a good party, you can make upwards of 60 million coins an hour from nether fishing, and alone you can make between 40 and 50 million coins. At the high end of this range, this puts you at one of the best money-making methods in the entire game, and you also have the chance to drop a 300 million coin item. You may be wondering, how do you make this much money from nether fishing? And the secret to nether fishing is that you make money in so many different ways that it can be hard to keep track of. To start, let's go over the basics of nether fishing. In order to begin nether fishing, you need at least combat 24 to enter the nether, a lava fishing rod and a basic fishing setup, and at least fishing 27 in order to be able to catch magma slugs. However, at this level, you will not be making very much money. You'll only really begin to start making lots of money when you can catch Thunders at Fishing 36 and Jobis at Fishing 45. To level up your fishing skill before the nether, I recommend sticking to Spooky Fishing and Shark Fishing during Marina, as these will give you a lot more XP than fishing outside of those events. Fishing in the nether is just like fishing anywhere else except in lava, and you have a unique set of sea creatures that you can only catch in the nether. All lava sea creatures drop magma fish, which is your most consistent source of money when nether fishing. Most lava sea creatures also have some item that drops soulbound and is used to either craft items or for essence crafting. Finally, there are some sea creatures that have RNG drops that can be sold for anywhere from 100,000 to 300 million coins. Now that we've covered the basics, let's talk gear. To break into nether fishing, I recommend having at least an inferno rod and thunder armor, which require fishing 30 and fishing 36 to use. However, this guide is about max level fishing, so I'm not going to spend a ton of time on low level fishing gear. Once you can afford them, Magma Lord Armor and the Hellfire Rod are both extremely worth it. The best attributes for the Hellfire Rod are pretty easy to get, but they're not super cheap, and they are Fishing Speed and Double Hook. To get a Double Hook 10 Fishing Speed 10 Hellfire Rod, you can save yourself a couple hundred million coins by crafting it yourself. This is done by crafting Magma Rods and then combining them into a Double Hook 10 Fishing Speed 10 Magma Rod. Then you can upgrade this into the Hellfire Rod once you have the money to do so. You can also either salvage or sell the Magma Rods that you don't use to craft your Hellfire Rod, but it's pretty difficult to sell all of them because you'll be selling hundreds. All Max Fishing Rod enchants are worth it except for Looting, Corruption, and Tabasco. Tabasco is self-explanatory, and looting and corruption just aren't useful. Looting, you don't actually kill any mobs with your fishing rod, and corruption is worse to have than not having it because the increased health makes mob kills so much slower. Flash is the only useful ultimate enchant for fishing rods, and it is extremely good. It used to be bugged and not work, but now it is one of the most powerful upgrades to your fishing rod that you can have. For reforges, Pitchin is the best for overall stats, but Chomp can be used if you need fishing speed, and Lucky or Treacherous can be used if you just need sea creature chance. Of course, stars are extremely valuable on a fishing rod as well, but past 7 stars they get extremely expensive. Armor is much simpler than the fishing rod, however, there are tons of options that you have for attributes. The most important and the most accessible attribute for Magma Lord Armor is the Fishing Experience attribute, which gives you 0.5 Fishing Wisdom per level. God Roll Magma Lord Armor is Fishing Experience, Blazing Fortune, or Magic Find, Blazing Fortune. However, these are super inaccessible and normally sell for almost a billion coins per piece. A much more accessible god roll is either Fishing Experience Mana Pool or Fishing Experience Mana Region. However, these are still far from cheap, and you really don't need them to be super efficient. 
The most important upgrades for Magma Lord armor are the Submerged Reforge and the Bobbin Time Ultimate Enchant. Submerge just increases fishing stats, and the Bobbin Time Ultimate Enchant increases your fishing stats based on the number of nearby fishing bobbers, including your own. Bobbin Time 5 is 100 million coins though, and so I recommend if you want Bobbin Time, you should craft it yourself to save a ton of money. The best equipment setup is the Rift Necklace, the Gill Splash Cloak, the Implosion Belt, and the Gill Splash Gloves. The reason you use this setup is for the magic find from the Rift Necklace and for the damage from the Implosion Belt. However, there are some other options in case these aren't available or you need more stats. The last piece of equipment I need to talk about is your pet, and of course the best fishing pet in the game is the Mythic Flying Fish. However, this pet is not cheap. If you can't afford the Mythic Flying Fish, you can either use a Legendary Flying Fish or an Ammonite. An Ammonite is better for sea creature chance, but if you really need the fishing speed, you can use the Legendary Flying Fish instead. Either way, these should be equipped with a Washed Up Souvenir because it gives 5 sea creature chance. As for the other items you should have in your hotbar, your first is of course your damage weapon, so I recommend either a Hyperion or a Midas Staff. Then you should also have a ranged damage weapon. I use a Yeti Sword, but you can also use a Glacial Scythe. Then you can have a Moody Grapple Shot in order to get blazes that fly away, a Daedalus Axe to maximize magic find, an empty Thunder Bottle so that you can get charge from thunders, and any kind of power orb. You should also have a magic find set and pet so then you can maximize your magic find when killing Jobus in order to have a higher chance of dropping a radioactive vial. Radioactive vials consistently sell for upwards of 300 million coins, so it's extremely valuable to have a good magic find set to switch to when you're killing Jobus. Finally, to maximize stats, make sure that you've eaten your cake, set your beacon to see creature chance, set your enrichments to see creature chance, and that you have drank a mush glowy tonic. There are lots of ways to gain fishing speed and sea creature chance, however, anything above 100% sea creature chance and 350 fishing speed does nothing, so you don't actually want to go above those because there are other ways that you can increase efficiency by sacrificing some of those stats. My favorite optimizations to make are in my armor and my equipment. The first one is using Wither Goggles instead of the Magma Lord Helmet. The reason I do this is to have higher intelligence when I'm hype fishing and to deal more damage to the high health mobs. In my equipment, I make two sacrifices, and that is using the Rift Necklace for Magic Find and the Implosion Belt for damage. You could also choose to maximize everything for Sea Creature Chance, so then you could use Magic Find Enrichments instead of Sea Creature Chance Enrichments. The last optimization I know of is using a Turtle Shelmet instead of a Washed Up Souvenir on your Fishing Pet, however this is all just up to personal preference. All of this is to say, once you've maxed out your Fishing Stats, you still haven't really maxed out Fishing, because there are still lots of optimizations you can make and play around with, and it's best to find what fits best for you. Now that I've finally gone over all the gear, let's talk about the two main ways of fishing in the nether. The first method is typically called hype fishing, and involves catching a sea creature and immediately killing it, normally with a mage weapon such as a Hyperion. The main benefit of Hyperion fishing is that you can fish in a party, so then you can take advantage of the Bobbin Time Ultimate Enchant and Loot Share. My favorite spots to hype fish are in the Dragon Tail, because there are large open spaces, but no naturally spawning mobs. Each time you catch a sea creature, you should immediately switch to your Hyperion and cast it at the ground a few times, and then switch back to your rod and cast it out again. You should also always be using the same two pet rules. When cast Fishing Hook, you equip your fishing pet, and when you enter combat, you should equip a pet that you want to level. Leveling fishing pets is a significant portion of the money that you make from nether fishing, so this is a really important thing to have. You should also always have the highest level of looting possible on whatever item you're using, so I have looting 5 on my Hyperion, which both increases the rates that you get magma fish at, and increases the drop rate for RNG drops. When you catch a Jobus in the Dragon Tail, back away from it onto one of the nearby pillars and kill it using your ranged weapon, but make sure to dodge because the Jobus will still occasionally attack you. To maximize magic find when killing Jobus, you also need to turn off your Enter Combat Auto Pet rule, so then you can have your high level magic find pet. Once the Jobus is at low health, switch over to your magic find armor set, cast out your ranged weapon, and then swap to your Daedalus Axe to maximize magic find. 
If you're in an organized party, this is the time that all party members should damage the Jabus so then they can get loot share. This is also the time that they should cast bobbers nearby so then you can maximize magic find if you have bobbin time on your magic find armor set. Although it sounds intuitive, make sure that you don't die to Jabus because this notifies the entire lobby that there is a Jabus somewhere on the server and most people will try to find it and then steal your kill. While this isn't inherently bad, it means that you can't swap to maximize your magic find, and that's the reason that you spent all this money getting high magic find gear. As a PSA for other people in nether lobbies, if you see a Jabus, try to just damage it a couple times and then stay nearby, so then the spawner can get max magic find. Organized parties for nether fishing are extremely powerful as they allow you to use bobbin time and to loot share other people's Jabuses. This is really, really good, but they can be hard to come by. If you're interested in finding places that you can organize Jabus fishing parties, you can join my Discord server or my guild, which are both linked in the description. The other main way to nether fish is barn fishing, which is a kind of funny name because there is no barn in the nether. This name derives from the similar type of water fishing where you fish in the barn. The reason that this is important is because you catch sea creatures and throw them off a ledge so that they can't attack you and then you kill them all at once later. When barn fishing, each sea creature you catch is thrown behind you onto the ground below you, where they can collect and not be killed until you've reached mob cap. Once you've formed a large group of mobs, you then switch pets and kill them all at once and then go back to fishing as you were before. The reason this is good is because it decreases total downtime because you don't have to switch to another item every single time you kill a mob. Just like with hype fishing, every single cycle when you kill your mobs, you should switch to a pet to level so then you can get all that XP. The main downside to barn fishing is that you have to do it alone and you can't take advantage of bobbin time or loot share. This is because there is a cap of 60 sea creatures per nether lobby and when that's hit, you can't catch any more. This means if there is more than one person barn fishing per lobby, it becomes significantly less efficient. This also means that if you start barn fishing, in a lobby where other people are fishing, they will often not be happy with you. Sometimes you will get griefed, and sometimes you'll get bullied out of lobbies. This isn't very fun, and so in my opinion, I prefer hype fishing. The main benefit to barn fishing is that you don't need as good of gear or as good of magical power in order to be efficient. Because you can kill multiple mobs at once, you don't need to deal as much damage or have as high of intelligence in order to be efficient. That being said, my favorite spot to barn fish is right here in the stronghold because it means you can cheese Jabus and prevent him from attacking you while you can damage him. The way this is done is when you catch a Jabus, you kill his two followers and teleport up and over the bridge behind you and then directly down into the corner of the platform. Once you're in this corner, you can deal damage to the Jabus from afar, and for some reason in this specific spot, Jabus will not attack you back. Now that we've gone over the gear and techniques you should be using, let's break down exactly how you're going to be making your money from nether fishing. The most obvious way that you make money from nether fishing is by getting magma fish. By selling magma fish to the bazaar, you should be making between 10 and 12 million coins an hour. Next is the money you make from drops that are used for crafting. The first of these is the Magma Lord Fragment, which can immediately be sold at the auction house for between 4 and 6 million coins. Next are Orbs of Energy and Thunder Shards, and although they are soulbound, they can be used to craft items which are sold at the auction house. By crafting Orbs of Energy into either Pulse Rings or Empty Thunder Bottles, and by crafting Thunder Shards into whatever armor piece is most profitable, you can make a significant amount of money from these drops too. Next up is Pet Leveling. Pet leveling makes a ton of money and is actually the single way that you are going to be making the most money from nether fishing. Use whatever pet is most efficient to level, but make sure that you also have an XP shared pet. Next is RNG drops. RNG drops are a little bit harder to put into perspective of how much money they make per hour. However, there are three big ones, and those are Charm, Flash, and the Radioactive Vial. These three RNG drops can make lots of money, however, of course, they are RNG. The next way to make money from nether fishing is actually from the armor pieces and the weapons that you drop from different mobs, and there are two ways you can make money from this. The easiest way to make money from this is just by salvaging these armor pieces. The armor pieces and weapons that you salvage give you between 10 and 30 crimson essence each. 
However, before you salvage each armor piece, make sure to check if it has the Blazing Fortune or Magic Find attributes, because if it does, you can save these up and combine them into a very powerful Magic Find set. Because 1010 Magic Find Blazing Fortune Magma Lord armor is pretty much impossible to get, 1010 Magic Find Blazing Fortune Lava Sea Creature armor is the most effective Magic Find set in the entire game against Lava Sea Creatures. Finally, to finish off our profit estimations, you should also include the fact that every time you get a Thunder, you do get a little bit of charge which can be used to either upgrade your Pulse Ring or to sell for profit. With all that said, with good gear, you should expect to be making nearly 50 million coins an hour fishing alone, and upwards of 60 million coins an hour fishing with a good party. I have a few more things to say before I finish off this video, the first of which being bait. There is no better bait than fish bait, because whale bait does not increase the spawn rate of Jobus enough for the price to be worth it. The last thing I have to say is about the fishing community, which is that it's a really great community if you are kind and considerate. If you're a jerk, you will be shunned and you will not have a good time with fishing, so I recommend just being polite and considerate to other people when fishing. With that, that just about wraps it up for this video. Again, if you have any questions about fishing or are looking for fishing parties, you can join my Discord server or my guild, which are linked in the description. If you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate if you liked and subscribed so I can continue to make content in the near future. I'll see you guys later, and adios.